Yo, Lone Ranger and Pronto Service, you won the giveaway from last week. And yes, the podcast is coming back. Hit the subscribe button and enjoy your trending comics list. Yo, comic fam, we are jumping into this list at number 10 with some Walking Dead goodness, issue 177. We're chatting about the comics that are trending this week with an Overstreet Price Guide advisor. His name is Russ Bright. And Russ, this book is hitting $9 average sales because it features the first appearance of Mercer, the Mohawk leader of the Commonwealth, a badass. But this is the season finale coming up of Walking Dead. What do you think about this? spec and key book. This is a really interesting one, Tom. We don't even have a high sales price, but they have gone up 975% in the last week with the announcement that he's going to show up in the Walking Dead show. Walking Dead has been cold for a while now. People are digging the show. People are liking the offshoots. But for the most part, we haven't seen a whole lot of Walking Dead comics spiking. And that's why this is an interesting anomaly this week. Michael James Shaw is going to be a perfect actor to portray this powerful hero, and I hope that he enters the narrative just as awesome as he does in the comic. We have a couple survivors that are about to get involved in some coitus when the worst thing happens. A zombie enters the scene, but no worries, an axe comes out of nowhere, and we see the Mercer debut for the first time. So we already know that people really like Princess Juanita Sanchez, and the fact that Mercer is Princess's boo, I'm very, very excited to see their on-screen chemistry. Now, last week, we ended up having the Walking Dead new color reprints, second prints. There is an incredible David Finch 1 in 25 variant for issue number six. That's spiking as well. All of these sketches are actually spiking pretty well, but I don't think it's because it's like heavy speculation happening and like a new craze of people interested in collecting Walking Dead. I think it's because the supply is pretty low because there wasn't a whole lot of orders. And with the season finale coming, I think that the hype is starting to diminish. Comic fam, what do you think about The Walking Dead? Where do you see these collectibles going when the show ends? And let's hit them with number nine on the list. Number nine on the list, we have Defenders 112. This is the first appearance of Power Princess. Now, this book was, again, from a Defenders series that no one has really cared about for a very, very long time. And this book is now selling for $40 raw. No high sale again because this came out of nowhere. 1,333% increase in copies sold for essentially Marvel's version of Wonder Woman, skilled at hand-to-hand -hand combat because she ages so slowly and she's had so much time to perfect her fighting skills. This character has just become prime for collecting because Heroes Reborn, a new comic, is going to be released soon. But I think it has less to do with this upcoming narrative and more to do with Archer just killing it with variant comics. This right here proves that the variant market only adds not just to the collectible, but really to the fandom. And all it takes is someone as talented as this creator to bring an all new fandom to a character that hasn't gotten love in years. So we know that there's a new series called Heroes Are Born being written by Jason Aaron and drawn by Ed McGinnis. We had a leak this last week that there is an art germ cover featuring Power Princess. And that's the reason why we're seeing movement in this once dormant character. What do you think about this cover, comic fam? This thing is freaking stunning. But this Hero Reborn narrative is going to take us into an alternate reality where Tony Stark never suited up, where the Avengers were never a thing. So Captain America lays dormant underwater, frozen still. And we have Thor, who's an atheist who hates hammers. Why? Why? Are all these characters in this position? Well, it's because they never became super, which means we have to have a new team, a different hero team to save humanity, and that's Squadron Supreme. And with Power Princess part of it, and for sure going to be incorporated into the narrative, it's got members hunting for her first appearance for the first time in quite some time. So in Power Princess's first appearance, she ends up getting into a fight with Mind Molder. And you know what? We generally expect these first appearances to just come out with a bang and it ends with a whimper. She gets her butt handed to her. So you may not necessarily want to read this if you're liking the character a whole lot, but I can tell you that we've been talking in whispers about what could possibly happen with Squadron Supreme for a very, very long time. And it's nice to see the introduction of a character that we do know. 
I'm hyped about this book, Heroes Reborn. The antagonist list sounds stellar. We got Dr. Juggernaut, the Silver Witch, Black Skull, and Thanos wielding the Infinity Rings. I'm going to be all in on this. Comic fam, what about you? And also want to remind you, you got to be downloading Key Collector Comics, the best comic app in the world. You utilize the code TOM101. You unlock a free one-week subscription and support the show. But Russ, how is this going to help them in their comic collecting and the hunt? Whether it's a new comic or an old comic, I have my customers and myself using this app all the time. Whether it's something in my 50 cent bin that I may have missed or something on the wall that's brand new this week, you have to have the Key Collector app to keep up on these appearances. Utilize that code and let's talk about number eight on the list with Earth 2. Issue number 19, we have the first appearance of Val Zod making the list, and this character is so dope. 1,300% increase in copies sold over the last seven days with a $50 average and a $200 sale at a 9.6. And you know what? That best offer price was validated, and the way I did it, Russ, the comic fam, really liked this tip. Let's hit him with it again, just in case anyone missed our video last week. The best thing about this is that you can actually validate what the best offer price is. A lot of times you see best offer and it has a line through it and you're not 100% certain. If you go to the actual listing, right click on the listing and then go view page source, you're gonna be able to see all of this gobbledygook, all of this code stuff. You wanna use control F or command F, depending on whether you're Windows or Apple, and type in tax X, T-A-X-E-X. -E this stands for tax exclusive. You're going to find what the actual best offer price was and know exactly what someone paid for this book. 200 bucks for a CGC 9.6. It happened quick because we are seeing right now rumors of a new Superman film, an original take on our hero from Krypton that has ties, potential, to Michael B. Jordan. Which version of Superman could he be? Could he be Val Zod, the character who is from a different Earth, Earth 2, and who was sent from Krypton? And Instead of being sent as an infant in the pod, he was sent as a young adult and he was hooked up to his ship and just fed information to learn about how to be a good human being, how to avoid violence and to become a pacifist. And it's this character who would emerge as a genius level hero and become the Superman of this particular version of Earth. So Val Zod is spiking this week, and he is not related to General Zod from the original Superman movie. But the reason why it's only number eight on this list is because there are other potential Superman that we could be talking about. We're going to have to wait and see on this one. Yeah, stay tuned, comic fam, and you know we got a giveaway at the end of the video. And hit that subscribe button. You know we're here every single week for you. And let's chat about some James Tynan goodness at number seven, a book that just came out. Dude, how are people missing out on Batman key appearances when the writer is literally telling you when it's going to happen near a month prior to release? This book, Batman 106, has been flying off my shelves this week. $5 average sale, which is cover price, but you know what? Because it's a first appearance and James Tynion told us it was going to be a first appearance, a lot of people are just snapping up this book. We do have a cameo to discuss, but we have to give some kudos to this amazing team. James and Jorge Jimenez are just knocking it out of the park with Batman. I want to remind you, post the Tom King run, Batman was struggling. Like near 60,000 copies being ordered by retailers monthly for one of the trifecta from DC is terribly low. And James and Jorge have just spiked it right back up to 90 plus thousand and has established new character after new character that's just landing with the community and the collectors. And let's give some kudos to this all new design of the Scarecrow. This dude looks so dope. So with the debut of the new Scarecrow design in this comic book, oh my God, he is so terrifying. And that's probably the reason that I would have picked it up. But Miracle Molly is the cameo you're going to have to pay attention to. She will be ongoing in this series. Now, I mentioned that members have already known that this cameo was going to take place because over on James Tynan's newsletter, the Empire of the Tiny Onion, which is why I think no one can pronounce his name correctly. I mean, even in this conversation, we're both saying it differently. It's Russ. so confusing. Know, it is what it is. Who cares? Because really, <laughs> the creative team is doing such a stellar job at keeping the community updated. I can't help but think other writers in this comic medium need to be doing this kind of thing just giving us some insight 
to the creative. Let's actually see what he said a month ago about this character. Miracle Molly is a member of a new gang in Gotham that calls itself the Unsanity Collective, and they're going to be huge players in 2020 and 2021. High-tech gangs of these who use technology to erase and reset their memories. 108, she'll be on the cover and make her first full appearance, which is why this cameo in 106 is so important. Keep an eye out for that 106. You don't want to miss out on the potential punchline, designer, clown hunter, Need I say more? The hype keeps happening with new characters. And for a book that you can get right now at your LCS, I think the comic fam has some hunting to do, especially with how bright and colorful and unique this character design is. Is that a bionic eye? I, I think so. This character is all about the tech, and I am so stoked to read about how she's going to be incorporated into this run. Battle Chasers fans rejoice because Joe Mad's been posting images from a Battle Chasers number 10, which is why we are seeing number six on the list, Battle Chasers number zero. This is a comic book, has a rabid fan base. A video game was actually based on this comic book, and we have not seen anything since issue number nine in 2001. 20 years later, this book is poppin'. We're seeing a 583% increase in copies sold and a $15 average sale for this comic book. And I suspect that it's difficult to find right now on eBay because people weren't listing it. But this isn't necessarily a hard book to come by, is it, Russ? Absolutely not, Tom. This is the type of thing that it does have a high print run and it has a rabid fan base. So a lot of people were buying these books when they came out. But again, 2001 is the last time people were buying any new issues of it. Now, a couple years ago, they released a new port for this video game, which caused even more interest in it, which is probably why they're bringing back the comic book now. This comic book run has such a unique situation taking place. This fantasy RPG just ascended the respect that this short issue run had because the game was so damn good. The game took patience. It took skill and the visuals were outstanding. So considering that we're going to be seeing more from the comic, maybe we're going to see more for the video game, but it doesn't matter because the fandom is so strong that all it took was this one post to boost the sales this week. Number five on the list, Final Crisis number seven. Now we already alluded to the potential that there are other different Superman we can be talking about. This is the first appearance of Calvin Ellis. We are now seeing this go for $100 raw and $600 at a CGC 9.8. On the 26th of this month, this book was going for under 300 bucks. It creeped up by $300 in two days, Russ. I mean, clearly there's some spec beyond the rumors that Michael B. Jordan and some interesting individuals in media are attached to a new Superman reboot. Let's get into this, man. I'm so hyped about it. I am super excited that Ta-Nehisi Coates and J.J. Abrams are talking about bringing a black Superman into the market. This is Awesome. And really, I cannot think of a better team to do this. An increase of copies sold of 2,150 in just seven days. And we got to bring you back to like 2019 because this is when the rumors actually started. This is a character that in this issue seven of Final Crisis, it's kind of akin to a one shot of an appearance. It's his first appearance and his only appearance until a comic that would come out later in 2012, which we'll get to in a second, that spiked because of Michael B. Jordan actually going on record saying that although there's a lot of Superman that he would love to portray, it's really Calvin Ellis, one that's unique and original that he would like to take on. So we know that they are looking for a unique take on Superman. And okay, Val Zod is unique, but Calvin Ellis, also known as Kal-El and Superman, is president of the United States. I mean, Lex Luthor's been president before, but come on, how many times do we get to see Kal-El be president. We really don't that often. The fact that this is such a unique character to do this, this would be a fantastic one to be able to flesh out. A unique character that debuted during the time of President Barack Obama after he joked about being from Krypton. DC writers thought it would be funny to say, you know what, let's actually make that happen in the pages of a comic. And they did it in this issue. But we wouldn't see his appearance again for quite some time. But hold out, we have another book to chat about before we get to that one. Number four on the list, we have G.I. Joe 32, $50 average sales with a $396 high sale of a CGC 9.8. An increase of copies sold of 1,888% in seven days. And honesty here, comic fam, I actually know this comic for a couple reasons. One, 
<laughs> the cover's atrocious. We'll get into that in a second. But two, Russ, I swear you've told me that this was like your childhood cartoon love interest. Like you really got hots for this character. Oof. You know what, Tom? It definitely was a toss-up between Smurfette and Lady J, but I really think Lady J won out on this one. Oh my God. Little five-year-old, six-year-old me did love watching her in the cartoon. <laughs> Dude, when she debuted in that cartoon, throwing her javelins, like her power javelins into the fighter jets or helicopters, whatever it was, she made her name known and she became a fan favorite. They even utilized her in the G.I. Joe movie back in 2013, didn't they? Yes, Tom. Adrian Pilecki did a fantastic job of playing her back in 2013 in G.I. Joe Retaliation, but that's not the reason why we're talking about her today. We know of a Snake Eyes movie that's currently in development, but the news this week that broke was that G.I.J., also known as Allison R. Hart Burnett, is going to be seeing a live-action adaptation to Amazon, a TV show. The G.I. Joe universe is starting, and I don't think anyone saw that one coming. So only a few days prior, this book was selling for $200 in a CGC 9.8, and that's how much motion a show can make. I'm super excited for this. Understand that there were so many tie-ins in the 1980s. G.I. Joe was massive. So the number of times they've tried to like reboot and bring this series back has been numerous. And I think we're finally at the point where you have the fandom that is there, the nostalgia that is there, and the people who really care enough to make a good new version. I'm excited to watch this. This character is well known. A lot of people collect the toys and her statue appearances. And you can only hope that maybe McFarlane Toys is going to get involved with this universe that's emerging. Where are you at, McFarlane? But you know what? We also got to give a big shout out to this atrocious cover. We mentioned it earlier. What's going on with this guy's hat? Wow, this cover of Zartan and the Dreadnoughts. I, I mean, again, you can't even tell that it's like his cowl because it looks like some weird hat thing. I know Frank Springer was doing his best, but honestly, there's not even dots in the eyes. It looks like John Romita Jr. at his worst. This leather cowl looks more like the Juggernaut's helmet, but I digress <laughs> because we got to tell the community about their way they can support our show and get some dope exclusives from us every single month. Hit the description or go to comictom101.com to join the mystery mail call. You're going to get two exclusives this month, minimum, and there were comics that you would have otherwise bought. Like, for real, Joker number one by James Tynan. Everyone's going to be getting this comic, but you can get one from us, and it's going to be a Raph Grissetti, the art director of God of War, exclusive. Also, we have Demon Days issue number one, the interior work done by Peach Momoko with a Mike McCone black light cover. Link in the description, support the show, and let's chat about number three on this list. Tom, number three on this list is Action Comics number nine. Now, this is the second appearance of Calvin Ellis. Keep in mind that his first appearance was really only supposed to be a one-time thing. So the fact that they brought him back in the new 52 to do more story with him is amazing. This book, $50 raw sale right now. And what's the high sale, Tom? 200 bucks for a CGC 9.8. But there are new stands that are selling high grade raw for 200 bucks. So this book selling a 1,850% increase this week, but keep in mind that this has already been a hot book. Tom and I sold some of these over the Golden Age Guru's Claim Sale. I sold five copies in a matter of five minutes. I put them on the shelf and they all came down. And I think it was like 15 to 20 bucks two months ago. This book is hot. This book is moving and it is in high demand. How do you make the responsibility of the most powerful individual on our planet, Superman, you know, a Kryptonian with godlike powers, more serious, more drastic, and more risky. You make them POTUS. You give them the political responsibility of managing the country and having to balance that with his powers to be able to just make whatever he wants happen, but also balance that political tide to do it in the most righteous and American way. This origin story gets debuted in this issue, and in the course of the next few issues of this run, we really learn just how serious and powerful and unique this version of Superman is. This has to happen. My money is on Calvin Ellis coming to the screen. Comic fam, hit that like button. I want to know in the comment section below, did you stay up till midnight like I did to watch WandaVision? No spoilers here, but we're chatting about some substantial gains with West Coast Avengers 45, the first appearance of the Vision. 
as a synthesoid with the white exterior? A 1,271% increase in this book for copies sold and $125 average sale with listings even higher than that. We saw a $1,500 sale for a CGC 9.8. Is this people who really just like the show? Is this people with a lot of FOMO right now? I don't know, man, but this book is scorching hot this week. Considering that you can get an Avengers 57, the first appearance of the Vision at like a 9092 for that price, I have a feeling that this is something that collectors have never experienced. Such a high demand because of how popular this monumental show has been for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And it's all happened prior. We're talking about like before the season finale, last week when these prices were starting to hike up, 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 uh, up, 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 and even further up, like as high as they can go because of trailers, because we knew that we were going to see this version of the vision. This right here shows that the popularity of the show has hit home to not just collectors but to the mainstream this comic although is selling for prices that we've never seen before it goes deeper than spec i truly believe that this is a moment that we're going to remember in comic history Tom and I love this book because this is an incredible homage to the first appearance of The Vision, and we have sent out well over 100 copies of this book in the mystery mail call over the last year. Comment down below if you got one. Yeah, I gotta know who got their copy from us. I'm so stoked to see this book really take off. We knew that it was probably gonna spike, but we did not know to what extent. And... You know, I mentioned comic history in the making with this show, with this comic book seeing all new heights. And I have a feeling with number one on the list, there's some more history in the making. And now we're at the list at number one, the number one most trending book in the comic book market. Hit that subscribe button, comic fam. And let's chat about an idea that turns out wasn't so bad after all. We have ENIAC number one making the list. A $150 average sale for a book that came out this week. We are seeing sales between 130 and 170. People were sleeping on the street outside of comic book shops to be able to ensure a first print copy of this book. It is hot and really it's well deserved. ENIAC is a real thing. The Electronic Numerical Integrator Computer. And back when the first computer was established, it was created so that it could calculate formulas the human brain could not. And this book is a work of historical fiction. What if this computer wasn't just a calculator? What if it became sentient in early American history and was to blame for many of the choices America made throughout U.S. history during its rise to power? On August 6, 1945, the United States dropped a nuclear bomb on Hiroshima. Three days later, a bomb was dropped on Nagasaki. What if the decision was not President Truman's? What if ENIAC did it? And that's what this comic is about. Mind-blowing and incredible. It is really just something that everyone is talking about now. Written by Matt Kent, drawn beautifully by Louis LaRosa. This comic book was one that I was highly anticipating because the hype was real. We chatted about bad idea. We chatted about the spikes of hero trade. But really when it comes down to it, to me, it's not just about the collectible and what it's selling for. It's about the quality of the story. And comic fam, this was the best comic book I have read really so far in 2021 and this is setting a very high standard you gotta read this book it follows the team that's actually deployed by the u.s government to stop the first computer so this book is going to be difficult to find because there are only a certain number of approved stores that are selling these bad idea comic books but a way to be able to discern between first printing and second printings is really really easy it's a lot like pokemon when you had the first edition had the little stamp that first edition everything else said unlimited afterwards this one only the first prints will say first print and to really drive the point home bad idea isn't even calling the second printing a second print no the comic actually is being called a not first printing this right here is an effort to solidify the prestigiousness of the first print the later printings are going to be redone it's going to be essentially paid to order and they'll make more it's not going to be worth anything more than four dollars so members that are paying 30 bucks are not doing this right because it's important for the comic book to also be able to be read and bad idea wants that to happen just as much as they want collectors to be excited about a first printing for supporting as well as backing a new title. So bad idea is doing their best to completely and totally revamp 
how comic books are sold. And some of these ideas are very, very innovative. One is that the stores that are exclusive to being able to sell these can't sell it for more than cover price for the first 30 days. One store's already been banned for this. And I love the idea of a not first print because a lot of times you've seen books out here that go for a first print that get snapped up by collectors the market goes up ridiculously and then no one can get copies great example batman damned number one when we found out about bruce's little member we had all of this amazing frenzy people were snapping up the book left and right the price skyrocketed and because people couldn't get first prints of number one I believe number two and number three sales suffered and people weren't able to read the full story until all three were reprinted. The fact that Bad Idea is going to be releasing not first printings of this to be able to service the reading market for this incredible story as well as the very collectible first prints that are ultra scarce, I think this is a great idea. In the 40s, when the first ENIAC was created, it changed the game. It made history. And this week, ENIAC the comic is doing the same for the comic book community. It's changing the game, making bold moves. Some are looking at this as being controversial. And I got to know your thoughts about this comic history in the making. And if you do so and you like and subscribe, it'll enter you to win one of 10 sets of this comic book that we will be giving out next week. Comic fam, I appreciate your support. And, as always, geek responsibly. Enough said. Comic fam, we got the second part of the Todd Father interview ready for you to watch. We chat about previews. We chat about error prints. You know I brought up Malibu Sun. You gotta check out this video. I made it for you. Have a great week.